Russian troops are reclaiming areas in Kursk Oblast, but efforts to fully push back Ukrainian forces are likely to become more challenging, writes Business Insider. In some areas, attacks stop. Despite initial successes during Ukraine's incursion into Kursk, which saw the capture of over 1,300 square kilometers and numerous settlements, the situation has shifted as Russian forces regroup and intensify their assaults. Over the past weeks, Russian forces have launched a robust counter-offensive, reclaiming control over villages and pushing Ukrainian positions back towards the state border. Russia has been reducing Ukraine's hold of the easy parts to take back, adding that they'll have a much harder time with the rest of the Ukrainian salient, which is still very large, said William Albert, a warfare expert at the Stimson Center. According to him, Ukrainian forces have been retreating from open lands and forests, territory that is difficult to defend. While someone might look at the recent advances and say they're big, I would also say it's because Ukraine just took so much territory, more than they even intended to defend. It's very easy now for Ukraine to do some sort of fighting retreats and seed territory that they could never legitimately hold, noted Albert. Meanwhile, Matthew Saville, a military strategy expert at the Royal United Services Institute think tank, added that Russia has so far reclaimed only the territory that was easy to take back. The report highlights that Ukraine needs to calculate what resources and losses it can afford in Kursk Oblast and ultimately decide if holding Russian territory remains worthwhile. Ukraine's defense forces assume that the Russian army, with the support of North Korean troops, will launch an offensive in the Kursk region within the next few days. The New York Times reports this with reference to the words of the deputy commander of Ukraine's 61st Mechanized Brigade, Lieutenant Colonel Artem Kolodkevich. According to the publication, Kolodkevich, who fought in the Kursk sector, said that his commanders had warned him that an assault might be imminent. We were warned of an attack in the near future, probably in the coming days, the Ukrainian lieutenant colonel said. The Ukrainian army has also issued a Ukrainian-Korean phrasebook for its troops to reach out to North Korean soldiers and urge them to surrender, according to a Ukrainian officer who spoke anonymously. Russian Marines in Crimea pay their commanders to avoid being sent to fight in the Kursk region. The command is attempting to hide information about losses, according to information from the partisan movement Atesh. An agent from the 810th Marine Brigade reports that at the unit's permanent station in Sevastopol, personnel issues are arising due to most of the personnel being sent to the Kursk region. The message reads, According to partisans, almost daily reports are received about new killed in action from the Kursk region and the brigade's command is trying to hide the facts of military deaths, although, as expected, without success. The soldiers in the unit are in low morale due to the constant deaths of their comrades and are trying in every possible way to remain in Crimea. As a result, some commanders are demanding bribes from subordinates to grant a delay and avoid urgent deployment to the combat zone. Atesh notes, those who managed to pay and stay at the base are pretending to work actively by setting up camouflage barriers and moving equipment around. The 810th Marine Brigade of Russia, based in the temporarily occupied Sevastopol, Crimea, is involved in the war in Ukraine in the Kursk region. In June, partisans obtained documents from the occupiers of the 126th and 810th Crimean Brigades. Notably, in November 2023, the Ukrainian Defense Forces struck the 810th Brigade, which they called retaliation for the 128th Brigade, which was targeted by the Russian forces at the beginning of that month. At the time, the 128th Brigade, stationed in a frontline village in the Zaporizhia region, had been assembled for an award ceremony for Ukraine's Day of Missile Forces and Artillery. Recently, Ukrainian paratroopers said they have captured two Russian Marines from a brigade that reportedly murdered Ukrainian captives earlier this month. Kyiv said the 155th Independent Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet was seen in drone footage shooting dead Ukrainian captives following an attack on Ukrainian drone operators on October the 10th. 
a retaliatory attack in Kursk between the warriors of the 95th Brigade of the DSHV, the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces, and the Russian Marines resulted in the surrender of two Russian prisoners, according to a Facebook post made by the airborne assault troops of the armed forces of Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces wrote that Ukrainian troops mercilessly destroyed the occupier, but mercifully preserve his life if the enemy drops weapons and surrenders captive. Smoke was seen rising over the Beirut skyline early on Friday following a suspected Israeli strike. It comes as Israel and Hezbollah continued to trade fire on Thursday as U.S. diplomats arrived in the region pushing for ceasefires in both Lebanon and Gaza. Rocket barrages from Lebanon into northern Israel killed four foreign workers and three Israelis on Thursday, Israeli medics said, the deadliest cross-border strikes in Israel since it invaded Lebanon. Israel kept up airstrikes it says targeted Hezbollah militants across Lebanon, where health authorities on Thursday reported 24 people killed. Senior White House aides Brett McGurk and Amos Hochstein were in Israel Thursday for talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and senior officials about the conflicts with Hamas and Hezbollah. The meetings focused on efforts to secure a ceasefire deal in Lebanon and to assess new proposals floated by mediators to free Israeli hostages being held in Gaza. According to a U.S. official familiar with planning for the talks who spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to comment publicly. Hezbollah has been firing thousands of rockets, drones and missiles into Israel, and drawing fierce Israeli retaliatory strikes, over the past year since Hamas October 7, 2023, attack out of the Gaza Strip triggered Israel's devastating war in the Palestinian enclave. Over the past year, the broadening Israeli campaign in Lebanon against Hezbollah has killed 2,865 people there, wounded over 13,000 and devastated Lebanese towns near the border. Some 1.2 million people in Lebanon have been displaced since Israel escalated the conflict into a full-blown war last month, when it launched a wave of heavy airstrikes that killed Hezbollah's top leader, Hassan Nasrallah, and most of his deputies. A year of Hezbollah rocket attacks have also forced 60,000 Israelis to evacuate from near the border. Thank you.